Um, all, I guess for the last two weeks, I've been in the book of Ezekiel, just a little bit. I've been in the book of Ezekiel chapter six, verse six through 10. And in this passage, not knowing what they were gonna share about today or anything, had been going in depth about who the remnant was. A remnant are people that have been taken out of a violent situation. The remnant are just not anybody. It's just not any group of people. It's people that have been handpicked, selected, and chosen out of a very rough, violent, dangerous situation. And those people that are God's remnant, the Lord has called for a special task of pushing forth kingdom. What we've been talking about is we know church. But God says it's, it's the, the dispensation of church as we know it is being done away with because it brought forth the spirit of religion. And the spirit of religion has captivated his house to where he is no longer in charge and it's man's house and it's not his. And God says, I want my people to be introduced to kingdom. So what we are about to see, there's not many prophets from scripture that's going to get up and prophesy your next house car or uh, so forth and so on. But I'm going to come forth and give you the word of the Lord that there is destruction coming. And it is coming to the house of the Lord because it must begin there first. And the Lord told me, if you, if you go to Ezekiel chapter 6, you drop down to verse 8 and 9. He begins to talk about what's coming and why because the church has committed adultery. The church has whored after every fad, after every trend. It has embraced sage, witchcraft, and now we're going to grow weed on God's property. And God says, I have seen it. And he says, I am turning my face against it. But there is a remnant in here that I charge you today by the spirit of the living God. I charge you that you get in the word and hide. I charge you that you eat the scroll. You can't give out what you have not put in and received. Because what is getting ready to come, the church will not be able to handle. But the kingdom shall stand. There's about to be a grace separating right in the church of God. There's going to be such a separating where you're going to feel uncomfortable like you don't belong. And you don't because God is calling you to kingdom. He's coming to break the religious mindset and tradition of men that we have formulated to be called church. That is bound in programs and systems, but void of the move of the Holy Ghost. And there's some ground shakers in here. There's some ground shakers that really believe what thus saith the Lord over what man say, over what people feel. And I'm coming to tell you that if you are not walking circumspectly before the Lord, that you will be shaken because he's coming to shake everything that can be shaken. And then after the shaking, he will strengthen what remains. But it must be shaken first because all dead fruit must fall to the ground. Too much dead fruit in God's house. I've been in seclusion for four months. Parmesia, prophetess, they can test for four months. The Lord has not allowed me to do much of anything but lay before him. And the Lord has shown me, 
I thought too it was just a word for me in my ministry but the Lord said because of the governmental anointing on my life I'm speaking to the church universal you take this word today if you walk in a faulty path because there's three of y'all in here you slipping and sliding with some greasy grace right now I charge you today not to let this word fall to the ground and if you know if you know you are not in the center I'm not talking about on a, a little bit of it I'm not talking about on this if you are not in the center if you can't confidently tell me I'm in the center of the will of God don't leave this place you don't play games long enough the Lord said you done straddled this fence long enough. The word came forth, choose this day. Are you going to serve the gods of this world? Or are you going to serve a holy, true, and living God that is looking at your garments to see if they are defiled? Because the church is defiled. We defile with religion, man's acceptance, accolades and promotions but we have left being sanctified and holy and the Lord said I'm coming for it in this season God is saying you can keep all your gifts go be reconciled to your brother then come back and offer your gift this is the season we're going in you better walk careful you better forgive quickly and you better obey right when God said it. Because we are in the moments of the return of Christ. The moments. It say when you blink your eye, the real church, the remnant, the kingdom, we're going to be up out of here. I'm not trying to play games to miss the first trip. So I warn you today. I have not been four months on my face in seclusion for nothing. I come to warn the house of God. This is not the time to play. This is not the time to second guess or question. This is the time to be about the Father's business. I will cry loud in the wilderness because we do not have much time. The church is filled with dry bones because of suppression and oppression. But God says, I'm going to raise up the remnant from among all of that. He said, I'm going to raise up a remnant to reestablish my kingdom. And there's many of you in this room, you got a part to play in this kingdom. And some of you have been sitting on it. You know what God is calling you to do. You haven't even had anybody to activate you. There's a spirit of activation in this room right now. And no, you ain't got to be prophet so-and-so. You just got to be who God called you to be. And you need the confidence to do it. You need the confidence to stand at the gas station when you're pumping your gas and tell the other man at the next pump that he got to repent and come to Christ. You don't need a church for that. You just need to be willing. So if that's you, I can't leave like this. I came here, I'm going to tell it, I'm going to tell it. I came here. Every, I told my husband I'm not coming to no more of y'all services because every time I come here, something happened. The first service, I'm going to tell it, the first service we came here, we got pulled over and my husband went to jail. Yes. The second time I try to come today, I, I'm driving, I pull up and have a whole wreck. Wreck my car. I get in the car, I say, Lord, I'm, all, I'm going through hell. I say, Lord, I ain't going back to no more services they have. I'm not doing this. I say, you know we don't have no money to get this car fixed. The insurance not going to cover it because I hit something that wasn't even moving. 
And I'm just riding, I called my husband, I told him what's happening, I'm not lying to y'all. When I got out of Target, because I, the reason I had the wreck is because I was so anxious to get here, I left out the house without no shoes. So I get in the car and I ain't got no shoes. So I'm like, okay, well I'm gonna stop right here to get these shoes. I pulled in the front of the store, on the side, on the curb, and then see they had a big rock about this high because my car sits up high. Run right into the rock, smash the whole right side of the car. I stand here before you as God's prophet. When I pulled on this property and got, I, I saw the, the, the light smash, the car smashed in. When I pulled on this property, all damage on my car was gone. All damage on my, I saw the car bent in. I saw the light broke. From in a 20 minute time span, in a 20 minute time span, while I got, I didn't even stop to think about it. I wasn't calling the insurance. I said, I'm going to this service. My husband said, you still going? I said, yeah. He said, well, God got something there for you. When I got out the car, I said, well, I didn't even take a picture to send it to my husband. I walked to the front of the car to take a picture, and there was no damage. They had some little scratches on it. I saw it bent. I saw the light broken. I saw it with my own eyes. And from Target, 20 minutes away from here to here, the whole car was fixed. Don't tell me that the God we serve is not real. I didn't even ask him to do it. He did it because he wanted to. So I tell you that to tell, I'm not nobody false nothing. And today, come on, just come on, come on. Y'all going to receive it. We're going we gonna to end the live broadcast at this time. Amen. God bless y'all. Hallelujah. We thank you for joining us live.